Hello, physical scientists! Ms. Getz here, and I'm going to tell you about our project, the first one in this unit, which is called The World Without an Element, CER Project. You remember CER, I hope, from earlier in the year, but it stands for Claim Evidence Reasoning. And what you're going to be doing in this project is coming up with a claim of what the world would be like without one element. And then you'll have some evidence for that and some reasons that you think that's what the world would be like. That would be your reasoning. So, for example, we are going to be thinking about one element in particular in this example. And in all of our example documents, I'm going to think about what would happen if the element oxygen suddenly disappeared. Dun, dun, dun. I bet you can come up with some ideas right now that you think would happen if oxygen disappeared. Like maybe I wouldn't be alive because I need oxygen to breathe. But oxygen is actually an important part of life, everyday life beyond just being able to breathe. That's obviously very important. Um, but that's going to be my example. So you want to be thinking about what element would be interesting to you. And I'm going to go over right now all the different parts of this project. Uh, and we're going to start out by looking briefly at our rubric. So this is an MYP rubric, just like we've used throughout the year. Um, and we are going to be looking at the highest grade. So what, what does it mean to get the highest grade on this MYP rubric? Um, this, the score is a little bit different for distance learning than it is throughout the normal part of the year. You don't have to stress about that, but I do want to talk about the rubric. So you can really be thinking about how you the best score possible. And so our highest score here has you discuss and evaluate the problems that happen because your element is missing using evidence. So when we're discussing and evaluating, that means that not only are you stating the reasons your missing element is a problem, so oxygen being missing is a problem for me personally to be able to breathe because I, my, my red blood cells use oxygen. So I'm stating why that's a problem. Um, but then I'm also going to evaluate the effects of those problems, these problems, on other situations. So if I can't breathe, that means that there wouldn't be carbon dioxide being breathed out by me. And so then my plants here in my dinosaur would die because they need carbon dioxide to take in to be able to live. So that would be extending it beyond just the one thing, or two things, or three things that would happen if the element were missing. Um, you are also going to want to make sure that you're really working to consistently apply scientific language. So again, I stress this on other projects, and your other teachers probably do as well. If there's a word you don't know, don't use it. Try to think of words to describe what is happening that you do know. So you want to make sure you're using your words. That means that you're using it in the most correct way possible um, so that you're using the scientific language you know and you're using that language to describe what would happen. So that's our rubric. We have a bunch of resources to help you with this project. First off, what you're going to do after you finish viewing this page on Schoology is you're going to do a little discussion post where you're going to pick your element. You can't pick oxygen because oxygen is our example post. And I highly recommend checking out those first 20 elements. Um, they are the easier elements to do for this project. And there's a little bit of advice in this discussion post as well. So you're going to pick out your element. Um, and then 3.6 is a research guide. It's an assignment that you'll download into Notability. And it has a graphic organizer to help you do your research and then plan your final CER. This research guide is due this week. You have to turn it in this week. Your teacher will then be able to give you some feedback uh, if you're on the right track or if there's something you need to work on. And then the very last thing is the final project, again, has a little assignment page that you download into Notability. And that you can turn in this week, but it's actually due next week. So you can turn it in this week if you think, oh, I've got this, I want to get it done, get it over with. But you can also keep working on it over the weekend, get some feedback from your teacher, and then turn it in next week. Um, and then the last resource we have for you are these examples. I'm going to look at a few of them and look at both of them in this video. 
Um, but you can also look at those examples on your own time if you want to, if that would be helpful for you. Then at the bottom of this page, right below this video, you find a list of research resources you can use. Uh, we have three of them that we recommend. I really think the best one is Chem for Kids. It has an easy to read article for the first 36 elements, that's a lot of elements, um, about their uses. And these are really good articles. Uh, Encyclopedia Britannica is also a really great resource and they have three different reading levels that you can choose from. Uh, and articles, I think, about every element. But again, I recommend using one of the earlier elements, the smaller elements, uh, first 20, 1 through 20, would be great to do. Um, and then this other one, Web Elements, is a lot of good information, but it's a little bit hard to read and click through. Um, so this one's sort of the challenge level one, if you want to check it out. So. I'm going to start out by doing a little bit of example research. So I'm doing oxygen as my example project. And this is the Chem for Kids website. I clicked on oxygen. And now I have an article that I can start reading and learning that oxygen is needed to survive by almost all other living organisms. Um, there's a lot of detail in here as I scroll down on the web page. They have really great information on the Chem for Kids site about what each element is used for. And that's really great because here in my research guide, your assignment 3.6, I'm going to need to write down a, some information about oxygen. I'm going to need to find out where I can find my element, whether it is easy or hard to find. So that would be whether it's rare or common, uh, and how our element is used. And this is going to be really, really important. There's actually a lot more space on the worksheet. I just have a little picture of it right here. So as I go through the article, I'm going to write those things down, writing down my research as I go, making sure to put it in my own words. You don't want to write down what the web page says. You want to think about it and then translate it into your own words. Um, and then the second page of this research guide, you want to complete after filling out all the information from your research. So the second page is to help you think about the reasoning of what would happen if your element disappeared. Poof, it's gone. What is the world going to be like? And so to help you with that, we've set up a little structure that says a use for my element is, uh, it is used in the production of steel. So that's something that I researched that it was used for. And then, well, what, what if it didn't exist? Would we, be, we probably wouldn't be able to produce steel then. So what problem would there be if we can't do that anymore? Well, buildings would not be very strong if we couldn't make them out of steel. And when big storms like hurricanes happen, it could easily destroy many buildings, dun, dun, dun. So not only am I saying this wouldn't be able to happen, but here's another thing that would happen. I'm evaluating what would happen if that if my element didn't exist. Not only wouldn't we, would we not be able to build those big buildings, but we would also have our buildings destroyed more because they wouldn't be as strong. And so I'll do that for each of the different uses that I learn about for my element. And I'd recommend having at least three different uses for your element that you can then make those inferences about what would happen to the world if your element disappeared suddenly and weren't there anymore. So then, I've done my research, I've filled out my research guide, including the reasoning statements to help me think about my claim evidence and reasoning. Then I'm going to download 3.7, and I'm going to be writing a CER that has a claim, evidence, and reasoning. And so here in my CER paragraph, I describe the world would be very different if my element oxygen didn't exist because its uses are very important. Oxygen is used in the production of steel. Oxygen is also an important element for making polyester fabric. Oxygen is also used to treat the water in the sewers. So here I'm listing all of the things that oxygen is used for. All of this is my evidence. And you can see that I've grouped it all together. If you wanted, you could have evidence, reasoning, evidence, reasoning, and just keep stacking them on top of each other. Um, either way is totally fine, but we made it this way so it was a little easier to understand. So then I have my reasoning piece thinking through what happens if element disappears, if oxygen disappears. 
So if steel wasn't, read, wasn't easily available, we would not be able to build very big buildings because they wouldn't be strong enough without steel. And I could actually even elaborate there that inference I made about bad weather and hurricanes and what would happen, making my CER even higher up on that rubric so that I could get a higher and higher score. So again, you have a lot of resources that you can use. Up next, you're going to be picking what element you want to do your project on. Again, I really strongly recommend using one of these first 18 elements. So there's hydrogen, helium, uh, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, sodium or magnesium, and it, it keeps going, but I'm going to stop listening. So any of those would be really good to do right up here until calcium. Um, some of the metals, these elements in the middle would also be pretty easier, pretty easy. But once you start getting down into the larger elements, the bottom part of the periodic table gets to much more challenging elements to do. So you're going to pick what element you want to do and start do, doing some research. If you get stuck or need any help, please feel free to reach out to your teacher, um, like me or whoever your teacher is. And I hope you have fun with this project. Take care, guys.